Hi, I'm Dr. Rachel Wangley, and I practice at Pine Ridge Family Medicine. And first of all, if you're anything like my patients, yes, I did cut my hair. I cut my hair this short on kind of a regular basis every couple of years. I like switching it up and donating my hair to something, some organization that does something cool with it. And it feels a lot better for a hot summer. And I'm also pregnant. Uh, so that's fun, and it's nice to not be quite so hot and have so much hair. Uh, when you're pregnant. So yeah, thanks. I like how it looks. Hopefully you do too. But today I want to talk about taking care of you. I guess with in the middle of the, the pandemic lockdown in 2020, everyone was realizing how much they missed different aspects of their life that they couldn't do anymore, that they couldn't hang out with friends or eat at a restaurant, and how much that meant to them. And that was kind of a beautiful turning point, I thought, for for watching our culture as a whole realize how beautiful it is to be with other people when that's being limited. You really appreciate that. And I really hoped that as we slowly return back to almost normal, that people would take advantage of that and realize how much they needed to take care of themselves and do those things that give them energy, that give them joy. But what I've seen in my patients is that's, that's not the way we've gone as a society that a lot of people, maybe you included, have just forgotten how to do those things and are just, okay, I'm back at work. It's hard to get a job. I need to keep this job. I need to work, 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 work. And people are getting the physical symptoms of their body trying to communicate that they're under too much stress. And, and there's that fine line of that diagnosis between like normal stress. I mean, not normal, but stress that you're overwhelmed by how much you have to do and how little time you have to do it and how pressured you feel like to get it perfect all the time and the official anxiety disorder. I mean, I feel like I'm diagnosing anxiety left and right still, even after COVID is getting better. There's not as many people in the hospital and not as many people dying, but we're still so stressed and overwhelmed. So wanted to spend some time talking about that with you. So thanks for watching. Some of the physical symptoms that I've seen my own patients come in with that maybe you've noticed more in your life that could be your body trying to tell you this is heartburn or GERD or just gastroesophageal reflux. Um, it's easy to confuse that. Uh, some people feel like they're having a heart attack. Some people uh, have a cough with their reflux. And so that makes them worried about what's causing that. Um, but there's a lot of ways that heartburn can be can present and being diagnosed. And it's an easy sign of your body being so stressed out, it's making so much acid in your stomach to kill whatever bacteria you're trying to get in and make sure that it's taking care of you. But instead that acid is eating away at your esophagus and your stomach and causing pain. So that's a problem. Um, headaches are another common symptom of being stressed, overwhelmed, not taking care of yourself. Uh, shoulders and neck being tight, achy, ugh. Stretching feels so good for that. Uh, having your stomach just be upset or gassy all the time. The stomach is a very sensitive area that's very in tune with your mind and your intestines. Man, they're going to get really upset if you're not taking care of yourself and you're just running on flight or fight all the time. Some people will start picking at their skin or their hair and making what was before maybe not such a bad bout of acne or eczema even worse by picking at it. Some people are having trouble sleeping at night and it's only getting worse. Some people's blood pressure is going higher and higher. Some people's weight is going higher and higher. Uh, maybe you're, the way your body's trying to tell you that you're too overworked, too stressed out is something a little bit different. So one of my favorite things is to sit with my patients and think about, well, what do they enjoy? What brings them joy? What helps them to relieve stress that they could do more often? So hopefully I'd, I'd prefer for you to think in, about your own life and come up with your own list. But I also wanted to give you some ideas just in case it's helpful. Um, this is a real world list of ones my own patients have done. I found a lot of them really cool. So I wanted to share them in case you thought they were inspirational too. I have a patient who does that choke rugs to take care of herself. I have another patient who not only that likes to do crafts, but she'll actually call up her mom or her sister on the phone and they'll coordinate a paint by numbers set so that they're both painting the same thing at the same time. I'm not sure that that's the important part, but it's kind of cool that they go to this, this extra step of showing how important it is that they're spending time each other, even though they live in different states, they're spending time together talking 
and doing something together that they both enjoy. Reading a fun book instead of whatever books you're being required to read or some just rereading a book that you've enjoyed in the past. It doesn't have to be something new and exciting. Sometimes it can be hard to pick out a new book. So read something that you enjoy. Sometimes just eating good food can make you feel better. Now, when I say good food, I know I, I love a milkshake as much as the next person, especially the next pregnant person. But it, there's also something that feels really good about eating a good salad. And, and I have a different definition of salad than you might. When I say a good salad, I mean that most of it is those toppings. I think the toppings are the best part, right? And they're not particularly unhealthy. I'm talking bell peppers and carrots and some nuts and some raisins or some craisin cranberry things. Load up on that stuff that you like and put a leaf of lettuce in the bottom so you can say it's an official salad. That's my favorite way to eat a salad. Or have an apple. Nothing feels quite as wholesome and awesome as having an apple, right? Or make yourself a smoothie at home with some frozen berries and some fat-free yogurt. Delicious. Feels good. Make yourself a, a sandwich on whole wheat bread. Mm, toast it a little bit. So good. Or uh, have a big glass of milk if you're short on time. Or a big glass of water. We all need to drink more water. Take a long shower or bath. Those are classic ones. I have another patient who all she really needs to do to relax is light some candles, which I love. Light those candles. Go with it. You're in an apartment that doesn't allow candles. That really stinks. That's how my patient was, but she, she moved <laughs> just so she could take care of herself because that's how important it is. If you're not taking care of yourself, you can't take care of other people. You can't do a good job at your job. Take a long walk outside. You can call it a hike. You can call it a walk. It can be around your neighborhood. It can be in a forest. Whatever is easiest, whatever you'll actually do. Sit and look at the sky. That's one of my favorite things to do with my kids when I, when I remember to, is to look for animals in the clouds. Look for shapes. It's fun. And staring up at that long distance is really good for your eyes. It helps your eye muscles to relax. That shade of blue of the sky tells your brain that it's daytime so that when it's nighttime, it has an easier time getting to sleep. That wavelength of blue helps you to sleep at night. Do some prayer or some meditation, whatever works for you. Try to blank out your mind for a whole minute. Think of nothing. Start with 10 seconds because a minute's hard. Try to increase it gradually. To be honest, I think of, uh, you know that if you were around for screensavers with the stars, that's what I think of and try instead of actually thinking of nothing that's the closest I can get when I meditate is thinking of that screensaver. Just stars rushing at me, nothing else. And if you start thinking of something else, don't be mad at yourself. Just redirect, okay, back to stars or blankness or whatever you can accomplish with your meditation. And that, that meditation, that prayer can be outside in nature it can be in a field, in a park. It can be in a beautiful church. All those are great options. You could even be in a beautiful library. I just saw a beautiful library the other day in Buena Vista, Colorado. That would be a cool place to just sit and meditate and take care of myself, even if it's just for five minutes. Go to the gym. Go to the gym with a friend, if that's your thing. I have another patient who, he, that's how he recharges. He gets to have some time with a buddy. He gets to feel good working out a little bit. Doesn't have to be too amazing. Doesn't have to be the heaviest weights in the world. Just enough to get you out and give you some energy. Go to the pool. It doesn't have to be to do laps. It can be to sit on the side of the pool, look at the clouds, read a good book, dangle your toes in the water, splash around a little bit if you want to, do a couple laps if you want to, if that feels good. <sighs> but get outside and, and do that kind of fun thing. Make some new friends or hang out with some old friends. There's a lot of hobby groups that are starting to open up. I know my beekeepers clubs are starting to meet again. I love keeping bees and, and hanging out with other people and talking about bees. It's pretty nerdy and pretty fun. <laughs> Go join a new church group or a new young adult group or a new whatever your age is group. There's other people out there that want to meet with you. Start a book club. If you're not a, a starter kind of person, find a book club. There's them out there. They still meet. Read a book, hang out. A lot of them don't care if you actually read the book. It's just mostly to hang out. Or just go get some coffee with some old friends. Coffee shops are fun to hang out in, and it's amazing that they're open again, that we can start doing this again. And stretch. Stretching and deep breathing 
just tell your body that you're in a good place, that you don't have to be running away from a bad guy, that you don't have to be getting ready for a fight, that the hormones in your body that tell you that it's time to relax, that's what kicks in when you take deep breaths and when you stretch, when you stretch out your legs, your arms, your neck, whatever needs stretching. Most of us need to stretch out all of those things. Whether that's formal yoga or just standing and trying to touch your toes and then trying to touch the sky while taking some deep breaths, it really recharges you. And I don't know how we keep forgetting this, but we all need reminders so sometimes. So here's your reminder. Go and do something that takes care of you today and every day. Sometimes multiple times a day because that's what we really need. But you can work up to that. It's okay. I understand. Thanks for watching this video. Feel free to look at that video right there too because that might be helpful for you. And then be sure to subscribe to our channel right there. We did just reach a thousand subscribers. I'm very flattered. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you get something good out of these videos.